What's up, Wall Fans, Common Sensors, Podcast Consumers, and of course, Social Media World. Welcome to the video feed for Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It to the Wall. This is episode 30. And if you can't if you cannot tell from my particular garb today on this fine Sunday, uh, this is serving as our official holiday special. This is actually the first Common Sense Sunday holiday special. Would have been the oh my gosh, what, fifth holiday special from Go Tell It to the Wall, but themed around the Common Sense Sundays. Uh, so, for those of you that are new, we actually gained quite a few listeners over the past year. I'm going to get into that a little bit more a- as we start the episode, but you're going to see a lot of Christmas-themed stuff going on in this particular episode, and we just kind of have some fun with it. Uh, usually, I would have a Christmas-themed beer, but <laughs> since it's the middle of the day on a Sunday, uh, no beer for this particular episode. All right. All that being said, uh, let's just get into it. Who one, two, three, come tell it to the wall. Tell it to the wall. Go tell it to the wall. Tell it to the wall. All right, wall fans, common censors, podcast consumers. Welcome to episode 30 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tells the Wall. I'm, of course, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And this particular episode 30 is serving as our official holiday special for 2020. I know, not a lot of great stuff going on in 2020, but we do still did still want to get the holiday special in, uh, which is, of course, as is, as is the annual tradition, going to conclude with my own reading of Twas the Night Before Christmas. That's right. Uh, so for those of you that are new, new not new, but over the past year, because we did gain quite a few viewers and listeners over the past year, uh, this is an annual thing we do. Um, you will you will get used to it, and <laughs> hopefully you'll be around for the next few holiday specials. Uh, maybe next year it won't be Common Sense Sundays. It'll just we'll just be back to go tell it to the wall. Um, and of course, as usual for the holiday special, I've got some of my holiday garb on. Uh, for those of you that aren't seeing the video, I've got my my special I believe Santa shirt. It's it's a, l- a little bit of a play on a Bigfoot. And uh, this the scarf I'm wearing is actually brand new this year. Picked up a Dropkick Murphys holiday scarf, which is like right up my alley. Because not only do I love the Dropkick Murphys, but they put they put a, a Santa skeleton in here uh, as well as a shamrock. So it's like, okay, well, that's just got a little bit of everything I like. Um, I'm not a big scarf wearer usually, but this one uh, this one's fun. So I, I wanted to bring it into the studio. So uh, with that being said, going to be all Christmas themed throughout this this particular episode. Uh, once we get through a little bit of housekeeping, this is, I used to use that term a lot with Go Tell to the Wall. Now we don't use it as much, but we're going to do some housekeeping because the rest of the episode is going to be just all holiday themed stuff, at least to an extent. Uh, and that's going to include my top 10 albums of 2020. Uh, before we get into all of that or even to the housekeeping, we always kick things off with our social plugs uh, now that we're two minutes into the episode. Uh, you can keep up with us during episodes, after episodes, four episodes, whenever you so please, and you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Uh, that is our Facebook page. Make sure you like that page uh, and get notifications when new content comes out. Uh, there is, of course, YouTube. Head over to YouTube, search go tell it to the wall, subscribe to our channel. That's where you're going to find all of the video feeds get posted after the fact, as well as our beer reviews, our parenting playlists, our mental health Monday playlist. All kinds of great stuff up there as well as our collaborative stuff. So make sure you're you're subscribed on YouTube so you get up to date on all those things. And, of course, my own personal Instagram account, which is at SoCalSean. That's right, at SoCalSean. Follow us on Instagram. I, I am a Facebook and Instagram user. I don't, I don't use the Twitter much. So you, you can find me on Twitter. You're just not going to get There's not a lot of stuff coming out of there. Uh, and then, of course, most important of all those things I just mentioned, uh, and inclusive of those things I just mentioned, would be SeanOrourkeLive.com. That is our official website for everything, anything and everything that is Go Tell to the Wall, Common Sense Sundays, and Sean O'Rourke Live. And you're going to find links to those social platforms that I just mentioned. Pretty easy. Just just remember Sean O'Rourke Live. Uh, and as well as those things that I've mentioned on the website, you're going to find a link to our Patreon page. Please help us out if you can. Uh, we're actually... I'm in the process of, of doing an upgrade in, t- in the studio. Uh, we're, a, we're a couple months away, at the most, a couple months away from bringing in a whole new CPU here. And uh, it's funny, my scarf, like the red on my scarf is making me look like I'm kind of hunched back here. Uh, okay, yeah, suddenly I just got a little vein. That's very strange. <laughs> What, where was I? Uh, oh, d- anyway, uh, in the next couple months we are going to be bringing in a new CPU here into the studio, uh, which... 
it, it's not going to affect you too, too much as far as, especially if you listen after the fact. However, that is going to give us much more computing power, for lack of a better word, here in the studio. And that means once we do upgrade the computer system here in the studio, uh, we will be going back to live streams. So I, I know there are some people out there uh, that really enjoy the live streams. I love the interaction. Uh, so we're going to go back to that in the next couple months. And, and the, if we get more patrons on Patreon, uh, it'll be quicker than that even. So, so please help us out if you have the means to do so and, and, and you want to help us out. Uh, and of course, check out our merch page. Uh, you can link directly to our merch website from seanorwarklive.com. Uh, we're five days away from Christmas. You're not going to get uh, stuff in time for Christmas. Uh, but New Year's, Valentine's Day, yes, you know, get your, get your, uh, get your holiday, you know, now that you're done with your holiday shopping, uh, start preparing for all the other shopping that you're going to do. Um, especially when the government sends you that gigantic $600. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. We're sticking to holiday stuff. Uh, but I am going to rant about something. And that would be uh, smoke alarms. Uh, I had a, I had a very 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 long night, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in mental health. Um, but kind of was pulling myself out of a haze this morning. Uh, I'm playing outside with my with my wife and kid, and I come back in the house to get something. And I walk down the hallway, like in the back of my house, and sure enough, I hear that that fucking beep. You know, you hear beep, and I'm like, oh no, oh no. And to give you a little background. Uh, so my house has has the connected smoke alarms that are all they they have batteries but they're wired, and something that I didn't even know had went through most of my adult life without knowing until a couple years ago was that smoke alarms, uh, not only the, everyone knows the batteries die, uh, but not only that, but smoke alarms themselves the unit they have about an eight to ten year life on them. I learned this a couple years ago when I changed all the batteries in in my smoke alarms my smoke detectors or whatever. Uh, we had a dog at the time that just, he would hear that high pitch and just, and he'd lose it. He would lose it. In fact, there was a time a few years ago that I was out at 7-Eleven at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, because we were woken up by our, our one smoke alarm in this tiny house. I think I think we did literally had one, uh, and, and it kept beeping, and the dog was going crazy. So I had to get out of bed, hop in the car, go to 7-Eleven. It was the easiest place to go pick up a 9-volt battery. So I hear that beep. I, I, I mean, like, I, I am just... I have some experience with this, and it's not great experiences. So, I walk outside, I'm like, you're not going to believe this. Smoke, one of the smoke alarms is beeping. My wife goes, okay, well, let's put some new batteries in. So I'm like, okay, I go to, and we have five, uh, four smoke alarms uh, throughout the house. And essentially, I could, uh, they all start beeping. If you're familiar with these wired ones that also have battery, you, you have, so you got to change it. And I look, and we got three 9-volt batteries. Three. So I'm going, oh, shit. I got to change all four of these, you know, so I'm kind of going through with just the three. Then I remember in my guest house, there's, there is a, uh, a, uh, a, an extra smoke detector that I had sitting down there, not even like hung up. Luckily that had a nine volt. I'm go to pull that nine. That one's dead. <laughs> so I'm frantically searching. I find, finally find like six more nine volts that I had stashed somewhere else because I've dealt with smoke alarms before. <laughs> there needs to be nine volts in this house. I'm not. I'm not getting up at three in the morning and 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 driving to the stores. And God, and that was today too. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm not sending my wife. So we I'm in Los Angeles. This is we're like a de we're we're a death trap right now as far as COVID goes. I'm not going to send my wife to the store uh, to get batteries. I'm not going to go to the store to get batteries. It's not worth the risk. Um, fortunately, I, and and as I pull out these six extra ones, I realize they're expired. It's like how. I, 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 how do I even have expired batteries? The batteries are like, they have like a five-year shelf life or whatever, and it's, I'm losing it. I'm just losing it. Finally, I kind of mishmash together batteries that are working, got it to stop beeping. I didn't I didn't even think I was going to be able to go in the studio because one of the smoke alarms is like right, it's the door behind me, not the closet door, but the other, the, the room, the studio door. It's right there. It would have been beeping the whole damn time. That, and it would have, even if, even if people were like, I don't care, it would have driven me nuts. <laughs> let alone other people listening. Unfortunately, uh, I have some batteries being delivered on Tuesday, so I'm going to go through and change out all of them and hopefully just be freaking done with it. Uh, but, man, it such advancements we make, you know, as, as a human race and with technology and everything. Can we do something about the damn smoke detectors? Something. Uh, it, there has to be a better technology out there when it comes to smoke detectors. It's, it's not this. It's not these things. Not these things, I can tell you that. On that note, happy holidays, football fans. <laughs> I have a little note that says, well, I don't know why I said happy holidays after I was going to rant. I think I said it like 15 times to start the podcast. Uh, I do want to get into some housekeeping before we get into our, and we're still going to have our normal segments, but they're all holiday themed. I do have a few things um, 
that are that are really very much housekeeping related and and uh one of them is very important to the podcast uh and, and i talked about this a little bit with our fourth what, what how many years i've been doing this fourth anniversary episode and uh you know there's some things that happen that that, that have become tent poles of, of go tell it's the wall one of those was the washington football team uh, and their very inappropriate mascot or team name uh, and I talked about that fourth anniversary, that that finally changed. I, I mentioned it previously because they are no longer playing with that nickname. Uh, well, sure enough, there was another team. And when this podcast started, that team, the Cleveland baseball team, was playing in the World Series. This is this is a tenet of Go Tell It to the Wall where I have often raged against these inappropriate mascots, specifically the Washington football team and the Cleveland baseball team. They are the, uh, by far the worst. There's other ones out there we can debate, uh, but they, those are by far the worst. Sure enough, about an hour after... Uh, I leave the studio recording last week. Uh, I get a breaking news that Cleveland has announced they are going to change their team name. Full circle here on Go Tell It to the Wall. I will say one thing. They are going to change their team name after this next season. Uh, and it seems like the debate there is pretty one-sided because it's like, really? And if you're familiar with baseball at all, uh, they don't even wear uniforms with that name on it anymore and they just they wear baseball hats with a with a c on it for cleveland so i'm like yeah, just stop using the thing <laughs> like you don't even really have to print new stuff man just just use the c stuff and the stuff that says cleveland call it a day stop using the name but they, for some reason they're doing that so i'm not completely happy about it but at least we're getting another insensitive mascot the hell out of there, uh, and I will say it's about fucking time. I mean, I, I saw it and I posted it, and that's all I said. It's about time. Uh, and sure enough, like, I saw the breaking news come across, and Kevin Jones, a uh, personal friend of mine, patron of the podcast, a big fan of the podcast, um, he knows, and he is also, was very, you know, is very, very uh, passionate about that being changed and, and sent that to me, and both of us were like, yeah, yeah, very much in agreement on that one. Uh, so I don't want to say good on you, Cleveland baseball team, just about time. Took you, took you freaking long enough. Ugh. All right. Uh, I'm about to stir some controversy, and I felt the need to discuss this. Uh, I don't know why. And in fact, I know that our very own on-air producer Chris is uh, is probably gonna give me a verbal lashing uh, for what I'm about to say. And uh, I'm going to avoid the spoilers as much as possible. However, if you are not fully caught up on The Mandalorian, just fast forward for about two minutes. Uh, I'm going to tell you, don't bother sending me stuff. Star Wars fans are so passionate, and people were crying at this episode. Uh, I didn't care for it. I just didn't. I en I've enjoyed Mandalorian throughout the two seasons. Uh, I felt like I was just being pandered to. Okay. Uh, like absolutely. And here's the thing is I've joked about the Mandalorian and I joke with my wife, like you got to really have a broad knowledge. Cause there's parts where you, where, you know, you see, you can tell it's like a big moment cause they say someone's name or whatever. And you're like, Oh, I don't know who that is. Cause I, you know, I've watched the films. I haven't, uh, haven't watched the, the animated series and all this stuff. Uh, but I'll tell you as soon as that thing came flying across again, spoilers, just fast forward a little bit. As soon as that X wing came flying across and went up, oh, here he comes, here he comes. You know, and, and I, I at first I was like, well, that's cool. And then it just became ridiculous. It's like, oh, OK. Oh, yep. Nope. Here he is. OK. It, the icing on the cake for me was when he pops out. You know, we know it's him. And, and my wife's like, it, is it? And I was like, there's a certain color lightsaber. I'm like, yeah, that's him. So when he comes popping out, I was like, OK, this is getting all right. And I just it, the icing on the cake, though. What's the was the droid? The robot. It's like. Why the fuck is the rolling robot with you? Leave it on the plane. You're in there like trying to quickly rescue it. No, that was absolutely pandering to a fan base being like, hey, look, it's the it's the beep boop bop ro robot that we that you remember from the 80s. It's like, OK, cool. Why is the stupid robot rolling around? Like, I, I, I save your hate emails and everything else. Like, I know, like, but you're just trying to roll in there, grab it, grab the kid and then get out. I it just it was amazing to me, and people were crying. Kevin Smith cried. I mean, I have emotion. <laughs> I mean, I've, I you know cry at what you want. Uh, it was just completely lost on me, and it really, like, kind it just kind of, uh, I don't know. I was I was just enjoying it so much, and then the 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 end credits thing, and it's like okay, that we talked about uh, last week because we knew these shows were coming. 
Um, but that's that's that market saturation, and people are gonna really get fatigue uh, from Star Wars. Absolutely gonna get fatigue. Um, but that's that's my very unpopular opinion. I know I've come across a few people that share that opinion, but uh, most people do not share that opinion. Uh, that, however, is mine. Save your hate mail. I don't care. I, 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 <laughs> ah, it's fine. I mean, if you love it, I'm not gonna say if you're someone that loved it. I'm not gonna argue with you that you shouldn't. I did not. I just didn't. I didn't. My wife either. She was like, eh, eh. All right. Uh, <laughs> one more housekeeping thing before we get into our regular segments here. Uh, we are going on a holiday break, and I say this mainly for the people that have that are new to the podcast over the past year. We go on a little bit of a holiday break. Holiday episode, special episode comes out, and then we, we pretty much are done until the new year. Um, that being said, with everyone being stuck inside, it might come in and do a little bonus episode. But don't be, don't be surprised if there's no new episode for uh, for two weeks here, because we go into a little holiday break. I spend some time with the family, and uh, and try not to think about yelling at a wall for, <laughs> for a couple weeks. All right, mental health. I don't have a lot about. I I want to talk a little bit about a personal story, but first off, I want to just say take care of yourselves. Um, we can see that light at the end of the tunnel. We're getting there. It's there. And if we can just focus on the positive, that's going to help help you out a lot over the next few weeks to two months, you know, however long it might be that we're still doing this. Um, but I also want to bring this up, and I haven't talked about this on the podcast in a little while. In a little while, um, and that's that's the the misconception of panic attacks. A lot of people like, and it, I've talked about this with OCD too. A lot of people like to, oh, I'm I'm so OCD today. It's like really, you just you have a mental illness for the day. Hmm, that's. Okay, it just flares up on you. Okay, which and to be fair, yes, it, it comes in waves when you have mental illness. That's not what I mean. What I mean, it's, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's not like catching a cold. Oh, I got some OCD for a week. No, you're just, you're just neat. You like to clean. There's a very big difference. And when it comes to panic attacks, people like to throw that out. There. Oh, I'm having, having a panic attack. Having a panic attack, and they're stressing. You know, maybe some anxiety with that stress, and and that's fine. Everybody stresses. Every and everybody panics to an extent. But I bring this up because a, a real panic attack for people that that have that deal with panic attacks, uh, when you're having a bad one, you don't you don't function, you don't do anything else. So, so anyone out there that listens and maybe you like to throw that panic attack word out there, that phrase out there, uh, imagine that feeling times a thousand. Imagine not being able to breathe to the point where you have to pull your car over on the side of the road. Imagine your entire body shutting down on you. That's what happened to me last night. Shaking, cold sweats. And this is it happens to me once in a while when I have a bad panic attack, when my, my anxiety is really high, and my body will literally just shut down. Now, not death shut down, but I, I cannot move. I lay down, and my body says, nope. And my head's going, no, we, we can get up and move. Nope. And even when my mind is getting better, my body still says no. I had a rough night, night last night, a rough morning this morning because I still wasn't 100%. I didn't think I'd be able to get in the studio. So keep that in mind if you're someone that throws those terms around. And also keep in mind if you're someone that deals with this, a lot of times it is just ignorance from other people. They don't realize. And that's why I talk about mental illness and mental health and bring up my own personal stories on this podcast is, is to educate people. Ignorance is, is the biggest obstacle when it comes to mental illness awareness from people that don't deal with it themselves or don't know somebody personally that deals with a debilitating mental illness. Education. It's not just stress. I was... It was not a good... I was not in a good place. And my wife was, you know, she gets worried and she's also kind of used... She knows when I'm having a panic attack and I suddenly shut down that nothing can be done. I just... My body shuts down for a little while and I'm done. You know? So I was in bed at like Jesus, ten o'clock last night. Barely made it to bed and just laid there. And then of course I'm up at three in the morning because the anxiety comes back. So respect that when it comes to other people. And respect other people's don't respect other people's ignorance, but don't don't go from one to ten until you've tried to at least educate them a little bit. Uh, and the positive news for this week. <laughs> Positive news. Uh, we knew the vaccine was approved and coming out. Now we are seeing it actually rolled out within the United States. People are getting vaccinated. Um, I don't I don't know anyone personally, but I know people who know people personally 
that have actually received the vaccine uh, as of today. Uh, mostly medical professionals that I've seen. So, so friends, like relatives of friends, they have posted saying, oh, you know, uh, one of them being, uh, well, he posted on Facebook, I could say. Uh, Simeon of, uh, of Stupid Ride Merch, his mother is, is a healthcare professional, and, and she received uh, her vaccine uh, the other day. I be- and I believe, I, actually, I don't know where she is. Simeon's in the Midwest, but uh, I, I could be wrong about where she is, but she had gotten her vaccine. I've seen a couple others, uh, not people that I've hung out with or know personally, but uh, related to people that I've hung out with and or know personally. So we're seeing that roll out more. And then uh, I actually saw this morning, got some breaking news. I, I think my father might be uh, coming up soon in, in line to uh, to get his vaccine here in California uh, if, if you hadn't seen that news this morning, they're, they're going on to the next round of people, and it's going to be uh, like grocery workers, teachers, and and uh, people 75 and older. My father turned 75 in June. So uh, so I'll keep, you know, I might have some some personal uh, connection and experience, and, and we're going to, and, and as soon as I can get it, I'm getting the damn vaccine, I'll tell you that. I mean, I'm not first in line. Let, every, let other people get it, but uh, that's, uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Get me to a goddamn show. Ugh. All right, parenting, COVID stress. I got this. Is this one's killing my my four year old? Uh, has definitely hit the wall. She wants to go to a park. She wants to see her friends, and it's it's hit a point where I'm even getting more frustrated. You know, my kid, my kid is literally crying. And I bring this up because think of the, think of the kids. Because I have my kid crying, and I talked about this last episode where they were having a they had a huge party neighbor of mine with a mariachi band and stuff, and. And, and, you know, I got my kid crying next to me, and I finally comfort her to an extent, and I look at Facebook, and it's like everyone's out, you know, hanging out, having dinners, and, fr- you know, hanging out with friends and all this other stuff. And it's I, I hit a point this morning, my wife said the same thing. She said, you know what? Uh, I'm going to start having Zoe call people and cry to them and have them explain why she cannot go to a playground because they can't stay the fuck home for a couple weeks. It's utterly amazing. It really is. We, different ends of the spectrum. And it blows my mind. Just no respect. My kid doesn't understand this. She she sees that, you know. Just think of the fucking kids. It, it's, it's blowing my mind. Speaking of thinking of the kids, as we get into more of our holiday theming stuff here, uh, Blink-182 has a holiday song. It's actually a holiday song. It's not just a Christmas song. But beware if you're a parent of young children, <laughs> really children of any age, <laughs> or like, or let's say your grandmother or something. Uh, that song is included in some Spotify playlists. <laughs> I pulled up an alternative. I think I said alternative or one of those playlists. Starts playing that song. If you know a song, uh, if you know a song, you know. <laughs> and just, so just be careful of that one. And I usually don't freak out about a couple of bad words in a song with my kid, you know, because we listen to we listen to punk rock in his house. Uh, but that song is like 80% bad words. So avoid that one. Uh, and and not even ju- not just with your kids. I'll tell you, this happened to me years ago. I was in Connecticut uh, for Christmas, and uh, I had put on a playlist from my iPad. I had an iPad at that time. Yeah, connected to a little Bluetooth speaker, like in the middle of <laughs> my wife's uh, parents' huge uh, uh, bed and breakfast there in Connecticut. wasn't really paying attention. My grandmother's kind of... Er, my wife's grandmother's nearby the speaker at some point when I'm off doing something else. And that Blink-182 song comes on. She was very confused and not very happy. So be very careful when you're playing your alternative and your punk uh, playlists. Because, uh, whoo, <laughs> that, one, that one's bad. That one's bad. All right. Uh, hard to find toys this year. <laughs> I had to do a little research on this. It, it, it's, it, it's interesting how how it's changed over the years. See, when I was a kid, um, and especially, gosh, if you were a kid in the 80s, you remember certain things. Oh, the Cabbage Patch Kids? Whoo! Oh, the Cabbage Patch Kids. Uh, the Nintendos, the, the Nintendo Entertainment System in 86. That was Somehow I got one. I didn't even know what the hell it was, but my parents got me one because it was the gift to get that year. Uh, and then, and Tickle Me Elmo, fa- you know, fast forward to the 90s. You run into some of those now, but it, it seems like a little a broader spectrum. Um, so I, of course, had to go through and, and give you some of these. Uh, now, the Mario Lego set, which is a Mario creator set. This one's really hard to find, but the kids are loving it. I'm, I'm actually really happy to see, um, you know, tactile toys instead of just electronics and stuff. And there's there's definitely more of that. Uh, Baby Yoda, of course, 
There's a couple particular Baby Yodas, but trust me, it's not easy to find Baby Yoda stuff. It's just not. Or Grogu or whatever. I I know his name's Grogu, but he's Baby Yoda in this house. Or Baby Kadoba. I don't know. That's what my, my four-year-old calls him. Uh, the Baby Yoda's definitely flying off the shelves. Balloon dog. There's a this balloon dog thing that I don't even fully understand. Uh, but it looks like those those there's an artist that does balloon animals. Um, they've been at some of the some of the uh, art museums here in L.A. Uh, it looks like a little version of that, and apparently kids are losing their mind. It's not really a balloon, but it's like looks like a balloon dog. It's plastic or something. I don't fully understand. Uh, it looked it looks. I I have a feeling this one's hard to get uh, because some adults are probably also getting it. Um, and same with this one, which I didn't even know this existed until this weekend, and I'm kind of like, oh, should have put that on my wish list. Uh, it's a Playmobil. If you're not familiar with Playmobil, go look it up. It's a Playmobil Back to the Future set. And it has Marty and Doc and the DeLorean. And it was funny because as I was reading it, I was like, I, I, kids are – and it's like, well, there's a little bit of a nostalgia factor here. It's like, well, yeah, that, that film came out in 1985. <laughs> so, like, I, I was three. <laughs> so it's not like kids these days are like, yeah, Back to the Future. Do you know what that is? No. Yeah. But but I might need to get my hands on one of these, uh, and then keeping in theme with with the the there was a unicorn last year at Christmas time uh, that pooped. Apparently, pooping animals is is like a hot thing with kids. So this year there's a pooping flamingo. It's actually it's actually sitting on a toilet. You feed it and it poops. I don't know. I, I, to be fair, I guess the bait you know the old pooping babies and those were around forever. So is that the appeal? I don't know. Pooping flamingo though. Uh, if you're still if you still need gifts for your kids going to have some trouble finding these particular gifts, but uh, that's what's real popular right now. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm still, like, I'm not fully, not fully here today, but we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, Prep and Landing, if you're not familiar with this one, this has been around for a while, um, and in fact, the original one came out when I was at Disney, and I've never mentioned this one before, it, now that I have kids. And in fact, last year, it wasn't on Disney Plus last year, weirdly. The contract had to end with, it must have been Amazon, one of those. Uh, now it is on Disney Plus, Prep and Landing, and also the sequel to Prep and Landing, which is Prep and Landing, Naughty vs. Nice. Highly recommend recommend these for your kids. Uh, they're also very entertaining uh, for adults. In fact, my wife and I watched Prep and Landing like by ourselves while my kid was asleep, Just and she hadn't seen it yet. Uh, and I was, and because I knew how good it was, and sure enough, she's like, "Oh yeah, this is great." Uh, and then the second one's great. You got you got Rob Riggle in the second one; does a great job in there. So so check those out. Uh, and one more thing in parenting: uh, if your kids are are a little bit a little bit afraid, we did get word from Dr. Fauci uh, a few weeks ago that Santa is immune to COVID. Uh, makes sense because he's magical. Dude's magical, uh, you know. So he's he's got that magic that can keep him immune to COVID. I will say from a parent perspective. When this news came out, I saw some uh, some backlash on social platforms, and people actually came out and said, this is horrible to say. You're setting a bad example for the kids by saying Santa is immune to COVID. They're going to think they're immune to COVID. It's like, are they going to think they can fly around in a fucking sled too? Santa's magic. It, you know? It, it, really? that That's your tipping point? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But we do know that Santa is a magical... Magical individual, and uh, therefore will, will not be catching COVID as he travels from house to house and can't spread it. So don't worry, kids and parents. Uh, as Santa is bringing you your gifts, you're gonna be you're gonna be safe. Still make sure you're washing your hands and wearing a damn mask, though. Oh man! All right, entertainment. <coughs> entertainment. Uh, I got a few things here, and then we're gonna get into a little bit of "Twas the Night Before Christmas." Uh, I do want to give you my top 10 albums of 2020. I must specify that I am not a music expert. I am not a music critic. I, in fact, most people would disagree with my taste in music. A lot of people don't like ska and punk and punk rock. Therefore, there is no reason to complain to me about any of these albums. This is simply my opinion and what I enjoyed over this past year because there were some great albums over this past year. So don't send me hate mail. You can send me your top ten, and I'll check it out as well. Chances are I will not like it as much as mine, but that is simply because we all have different tastes in music. Some people out there don't realize that, and they need to watch Trolls World Tour, and maybe they will get a clue. Yes, Trolls World Tour. I don't. Where am I going with this? Top ten albums of 2020. 
Starting with number 10, these are my own personal opinions, not anyone else's. They do not reflect the opinions of Go Tell Us the Wall, even though they do, because I am Go Tell Us the Wall. <laughs> number 10 would be Anti-Flag 2020 Vision. If you're not familiar with Anti-Flag, great band. Uh, they're not one of my absolute favorites. They are they are fairly they're fun to see live. Did have a one bad experience with, if anyone remembers, about a year and change ago, uh, fa some anti-flag fans pushing Polly in the pit, and I had to uh, not like swoop in Superman status and save her, but my sis and I gave her a little escape to not get pushed around so she could finish playing in the pit. Uh, but I do love me some anti-flag. Number nine, the network, Money Money 2020 Part Two. If you're not familiar with this one, this is Green Day. I don't care what they say. They are Green Day. But definitely make sure you listen to Ivanka is a Nazi. Ivanka spelled with three Ks. Number eight, brand new band to me in 2020 would be The Roadblocks, Troubled Times. Highly, highly recommend The Roadblocks, Troubled Times. They are a band out of Germany. We do have a, a, uh, uh, a, a uh, punk rock suggestions featuring The Roadblocks. Uh, that would be on the Something's Not Right Studios uh, YouTube channel, but it is featuring... Yours truly. Number seven, Suicide Machines Revolution Spring. I was really happy to see Suicide Machines kind of get back to their roots a little bit. Fantastic album, start to finish. Um, highly, highly recommend if you haven't gotten it. Gold number six, Goldfinger, Never Look Back. That song with Monique is straight fire, as the kids would say these days. Uh, number five, and I will say here, Weirdly, like, and just because it, it doesn't matter, but I grappled with four and five. These two are interchangeable for me. Just, they're interchangeable. Five could be four, four could be five. Uh, but for purposes of listing them out, number five, The Bomb Pops, Death in Venice Beach. This album came out March 13th, like the day the pandemic got crazy, uh, at least here in, in Southern California. It, it, all fantastic tracks. Love The Bomb Pops. Just got a new sweatshirt. Thank you, Simeon and Stupid Red. Uh, number four, Bad Cop, Bad Cop, The Ride. Start to finish, fantastic album. And again, those two, I could go either way on those two. Just absolutely. Uh, but now we get into the top three. Number three is Less Than Jake's Silver Linings. I'm obviously a little biased. Less Than Jake is a top three band of mine, hands down. I love Less Than Jake. New album hits incredibly well. My one criticism about the new album is uh, I needed a little more Roger vocals. I needed a little more Roger Lima vocals, but it's not a big complaint. It's just I happen to enjoy Lima's voice. Uh, not that I don't like Chris's voice. It's just I, I like a half and half. Almost. Like Bomb Pops do it really well. It's like half and half because I, I love Jen's voice. I love Polly's voice. It, it's great. Um, so that would be the only complaint I have there. Uh, number two, The Streets. None of us are getting out of this life alive. The Streets is pretty much the only electronic music I listen to. There is some you know pops up here and there. Uh, but the streets, none of us are getting out of this life alive. And then people are going to be like, what? That's weird in there. Yes, I enjoy the streets. It's not typical of the music that I usually listen to. However, on this new album, they, there's a track featuring the Idols, which are basically a legendary punk band. Uh, and number one album for me of 2020 is actually a band that was new to me in this year. But this is b hands down by far my number one album of 2020. And that would be The Drowns Under Tension. The Drowns are one of my newest, favoritest bands around. Um, and I will caveat this by saying these are full-length albums. Uh, Barstool Preachers, which are one of my absolute favorite bands, they did put out an EP, uh, but I, I, this is full albums on here. So so honorable mention to Barstool Preachers, uh, who, who I'm positive next holiday special will be in the top 10 albums, guarantee it, because they got a new album that's coming out uh, next year. All right, uh, again, please don't send me hate mail. That's just what I like. And please don't send me hate mail on this because I want to give you my top three Christmas movies of all time. Just what I like personally. And uh, y if you can see, you know, if you're watching the video, see this little guy sitting here? Yeah, I got I got a little, got a lot of love for the Muppets. And uh, so therefore, you can figure out where this one's going. Uh, number three, Muppet Christmas Carol. Highly, highly recommend Muppet Christmas Carol. Fantastic. Um, even even for adults, watch it with your kids, but just adults. My number two, don't watch with your kids unless they're a little older, like teens, even tweens maybe. Uh, number two would be Christmas Vacation. I have loved that movie since I was a kid. Uh, it's a, it's a great one. It's just comedic gold before Chevy Chase became a terrible human being. Uh, also written by John Hughes. Who doesn't love John Hughes? Uh, and my number one favorite Christmas movie of all time is Muppet. 
Family Christmas. Don't order that DVD on Amazon. Go watch it on YouTube because you can't get the full DVD together. I grew up with it because we had it recorded from television. This was a, a television special that was put out, but if you're not familiar with it, it features not only the Muppets from The Muppet Show, but it also features Sesame Street characters, and it also features Fraggles. I love me some Muppet Family Christmas. I haven't watched it yet this year, and my kid has yet to watch it. I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, I am fortunate enough uh, because a close friend of mine, well, actually, my wife gave it to me for Christmas a few years ago, but a, a close friend of ours uh, actually had the full version on DVD burned me a DVD. So I've got the full version without all the, there's certain songs get pulled out if you, if you try to buy it on Amazon, buy the, the actual DVD. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to like steal content. I'm very much like don't pirate content, but that that's the only way you can get it. Like you can't, you just go watch, you can watch it on YouTube, you know, uh, but that's the only way you can get the full, full, uh, full holiday special there. Uh, and as far as new stuff, if you're not familiar with these two, uh, last year this this film Noel came out uh, with Anna Kendrick. It's 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 a great fun uh, film. Might watch it again this year. Uh, and we, my wife and I took the time to watch Happiest Season, which is the Kristen Stewart holiday movie that just came out. Uh, recommend that one as well. Noel, you can probably watch with your kids. Uh, Happiest Season, maybe a little bit older on the kids. It's like nothing terrible in there, but you're going to be explaining a lot of stuff like. And not even like, oh, why are, you know, I'm not talking about the same-sex couple. I'm just like, yeah. And not not like weird stuff. You're just, you're going to have your four-year-old talking to you the whole movie. <laughs> like, that's, what what's going on there? Just, it's a little too, yeah. Not that it's like bad, just a lot going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, and last but not least, I'm going to give you my top five uh, holiday songs of all time. Uh, and these are mine personally. These are what I enjoy. And it's actually, in the end, it's actually much more than a top five songs because I will say at number five, all of the Jackson 5 uh, Christmas songs are, are fantastic. Uh, who doesn't love Little Michael? They're great. Check those out. Uh, number four, I Did It For The Toys by Dance Hall Crashers. Yes. If you're not familiar with this one and you enjoy some ska, uh, get educated because you got to love some Dance Hall Crashers. And especially I Did It For The Toys. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, number three, Oi to the World by the Vandals and or No Doubt. Personally, uh, I like the No Doubt version better just because it has more horns in it, uh, but the Vandals obviously did it before uh, No Doubt did. Uh, number two, Christmas Wrapping by the Waitresses. Christmas Wrapping. That is a classic. And there's a few different versions out there. I like the Waitresses version of it. Uh, and number one, Fairy Tale of New York by the Pogues. Uh, I have trouble listening to that song around the holidays and not tearing up just a little bit. And I know there's some controversy with that song this year, and I don't want to even get into that. I just appreciate the song and the feelings I get from that song. Uh, honorable mention, I will say, is, is I, lo I love me some Mannheim Steamroller. I don't know what it is. I don't love all of it. I love the real upbeat, like... Uh, it's it's like one of my guilty pleasures is uh, is some Mannheim Steamroller. It's and if you're not familiar with Mannheim, it, it's not the same, but it's similar to a uh, oh, Trans Siberian Orchestra. It's very like you know, it's it's good stuff. Uh, if if you're not familiar with it, check it out. It's not for everybody, but it is uh, definitely one of my guilty guilty pleasures. I tell you, I keep looking out my uh, my studio window here. It, like <laughs> I'm just I'm constantly looking out my front windows because there's there's Christmas gifts being delivered. <laughs> Effort, like all the time and I'm like wait is this oh nope and I, I think actually something did just get delivered some kind of Christmas gift gotta get gotta get to get get some wrapping done here for Pete's sake all right uh that's gonna almost do it for our our holiday special 2020 uh, but of course before we leave you with our final goodbye of of 2020 and quick reminder too uh if you're, if you're gonna be counting down on New Year's just just know that because the calendar changes, like, the world's not just suddenly going to change. I've said this so many times before. <laughs> like, we're still in it. It's like, like oh, thank God 2020 is over because everything was 2020's fault. Like, no, it just, no, no. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, but before we get there, I, I am going to do our annual reading of Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I'm going to try, yeah, I think I can do this without my glasses this year. Somehow my eyes are getting stronger. I think I've been eating lots of carrots. All right. Twas the Night. Before Christmas. 
"'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lone arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what, in, what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name, now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of his pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the dawn of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Happy holidays, wall fans. Uh, I, I have a very, and I've spoken about this before, I have a uh, very visceral connection to the holidays. Um, I tend to get very emotional, and it, gets, it comes out as I hate the holidays. Uh, and it's, that's actually more of my defense mechanism. Um, and I've learned to, to contain that, you know, it's come and gone as a kid. I even would have trouble and, you know, everyone goes home for Christmas and, uh, it's been a long time since I went home for Christmas and that would be my, my grandmother's home in Chicago. Uh, and as of three years ago, I, there's no home there to even go to. And, uh, I often beat myself up that I didn't go back there for another year after spending 18 Christmases, uh, in Chicago, um, but I bring this up because I think a lot of people out there have that feeling. Um, and for me, over the past few years, one of the things that I, that I remind myself is to look at it through my daughter's eyes. This is such an odd year for everybody, kids especially. But if you have kids or you have friends or family with kids, look at the wonder in their eyes and try to remember that magic. Because to them it's magic. To me, it's still magic. I just lash out at it in the wrong way. And I think a lot of people do that. And that's okay. But try to recognize that. And find the joy that others find in this holiday season. And in fact, for, for me, one of those is Twas the Night Before Christmas. Uh, we didn't grow up reading this. And not, I didn't really miss out on anything, but we didn't grow up reading it. Uh, when my daughter was born in 2016, she was born in November, I realized we didn't have a Twas the Night Before Christmas book. I went out searching. I was at a Toys R Us. Uh, I was at a Target. Went to another Target. Found the very last copy of Twas the Night Before Christmas in that Target. Uh, and that was also the year, the first year we read it on the podcast. And this is the same book that I read to my daughter now uh, every year. And will continue uh, for years to come until she gets, she gets tired of me. Uh, so on that note, 
like I said, happy holidays to all of you out there. Whatever it is you celebrate. Um, and even if you don't celebrate anything, just enjoy this time. You know, enjoy your family. We're all stuck at home for the most part anyway, except for those of you that are out there just doing things willy-nilly. But enjoy it. Take some time. And, uh, and we'll be back in the new year with, with lots and lots of common sense. All right, on that note, uh, that's going to do it for us here in 2020. Probably get some new content out over the next couple weeks, just little stuff, but probably no full episodes necessarily. Um, and until then, <coughs> until we are back next year, uh, I am Sean O'Rourke, your absolute favorite podcast host, and this is Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It to the Wall, episode 30, also serving as our holiday special for 2020. And until we're back, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, remember, no matter what you do, no matter who you're with, no matter where you go, and no matter why you are doing it, always, always use common sense. <laughs>